Welcome to the Fat Guys with Smokers podcast. I'm Mike. And I'm John. We're a couple of overweight barbecue enthusiasts trying to share our love for sweet and smoky food with the world. Thanks for hanging out with us as we talk about life, share recipes, successes, and failures that have all led to our love of cooking outdoors. Welcome back, everybody. I'm John, here with Mr. Bohm. Ugh. Mr. Bohm's my father. How dare you? What do you... It, so it's weird, because when I was a kid, everyone was Mr. So-and-so, Mrs. So-and-so. Right. I mean, when I was little, I grew up in the South, but even, <clears throat> even in the Midwest when I was in high school... Everybody was Mr. and Mrs. Yeah, well, that's how it was here, too, growing up. But I feel like even now at school, kids are calling their teachers by their first name. Are you Mike at school, or are you Mr. No, Bohm? No, I'm just Bohm, straight Bohm. Bohm. No Mr., so I'm all right with it. I, uh, my mother-in-law found out, she's like, that's so disrespectful. You should make him call you Mr., and I was like, I, I'm not that guy like I am. That's yeah, fine. I, I do think it'd be weird if they called me by my first name. There's some teachers that are fine with it, and I'm like, Ugh. I don't know. That seems, I don't know. We got to keep some line. It's a you little know? sus. Yeah, sus. Look at you okay. using the modern day vernacular. Somebody at work taught it to me. Nice. Trying, trying to stay hip and <laughs> proudy, hip and hip and alive, hip and alive, dude. Stupid cough. That's all, dude. I was telling you the pollen count apparently is out of control. My allergies, and I don't usually get bad allergies unless it's crazy bad, but they've been bugging me the last couple days. So, got that going for us. We kind of inadvertently just talked about the weather, so we need to change the subject real hey, quick. Let's just put it this way: that in both of the <clears throat> Both the organizations that I lead at work, we spent at least a half hour today talking about remote employees and who was in the southeast with the hurricane. Mm. And it's relevant. Yeah, there's a lot going on. A lot going on that way. Yeah, it's weird how you used to be like, oh, Florida's getting a lot of rain. Yeah. And now it's like, huh. I've got 45 people that may be without power. I should make sure that they're okay. <laughs> oh, shoot. Yeah, it's crazy. But, hmm. Mike. Yo. I understand you uh, You had, a, had an experience on Sunday. I did have an experience on Sunday. You don't know what I'm talking about. No, not really. I think so, but I'm afraid to say no. It's one of those things like, you know, when a cop pulls you over and you just look straight ahead and answer yes or no questions until you figure out what you're being accused of so you don't plead guilty to a crime they don't know about? Do you know why I pulled you over? <laughs> well, I'd love for you to explain that to me, officer. <laughs> no, but please tell me. Uh, you were cooking ribs. I was. Yeah, dude. Yeah, I posted a question about this, and I don't, I don't really know how questions work, but I'm pretty sure more than one person is supposed to answer it. Um, but yeah, we were cooking, Damon loves to cook ribs with me. He's pretty into it, which is fun. Um, but yeah, so we put them on before church and we were just at church for a while and, uh, what? Uh, I hadn't looked at the responses yet. <laughs> the one? There is one response from your wife that says, bruh. <laughs> <laughs> That's all my little three-year-old. She says that every time she's annoyed, she just goes, Bruh. It's super annoying. And she <laughs> might be the cutest three year old I know. She is totes adorbs, man. I'm not gonna lie. Um anyway, we we're cooking ribs and, and we ended up uh not getting home as soon as we thought. And by the time we got home, the ribs had been cooking for about three hours. Um, which is normally where I would wrap, but they're baby backs and I checked the temp and we we're sitting right around like one ninety. And I was like, I'm not going to wrap them for a few minutes while they come up. So I just kind of mopped them. And unpopular opinion, I'm starting to wonder if the wrapping matters as much. Now, full disclosure, I was not there 
to baste or mop or spritz or whatever. And so the outside did get a little bit dry. But as far as like the juiciness and the inside and really the overall tenderness, I was pretty impressed. And I've seen, like I've just always wrapped them because that's how I was taught and that's how I've always done it. Uh, and you always see these old codgers on the forums. It's like, we don't ever wrap our ribs. Like, nah. And I'm always like, oh my gosh, whatever, dude. But now I'm kind of like, I wonder if it makes as big a difference as I always thought it did. And are, this was on your pellet grill? Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's my experience. I put it out to the world to try to get some feedback, and all I got was a bruh from my wife. So yeah. I'm done trying to do surveys and such. I know. There were 80 people that saw that. I saw that. And Whitney was the only one that even had the courage to say bruh. Well, and the reason was because I said, I can't even, I don't know how to tell. I'm new to everything. I mean, it's not a surprise. But I didn't know how to tell if people were answering my questions. She's like, oh, well, I'll just I'll just reply back to you. And she did it and just <laughs> snickered at me. But I was able to see it. But that's the only one. So yeah. I am genuinely curious if you're listening. Uh, let us know. Have you wrapped? Have you not wrapped your ribs? And did you notice a huge difference? Because I am starting to... I mean, competition's different. But I'm starting to wonder if... I've been lied to my whole life, and I don't necessarily need to rap. I don't think you've been lied to your whole life. I think you had some good things going for you on Sunday, weather-wise. Yeah, that's true. Like, it was humid on Sunday. Yeah, that's a good that point. That helped. Because um, I've done it before, and I do think mopping is a big part of it. Because mm-hmm. um, I've, I've done it a couple of times. Sometimes they're fine. Other times they end up really dry. Really? Um, so maybe it was just a fluke, not necessarily a fluke, but good, good things all coming together. Yeah. And they were thick slabs of ribs too. I didn't cut them down and they had plenty of fat on them. So, yeah. so I, I don't think it's a bad way to do ribs, but I'd be selective about when I did it that way. Yeah. Maybe not every time. That's fair. But it was an interesting, in my whole life, I mean my whole life, the 10 years I've been cooking ribs. I've just been like, oh, why would you not rap? You always need to rap. And now I'm like, I wonder if you could get away with not doing it and just mopping it. And so I'm, yeah. I'm thinking maybe next time I try it all. I mean, I won't leave it alone for that long. It'll definitely be a constant mopping or spritzing yeah. or something. But because the outside did get a little bit dry, but it was pretty good. So yeah, no, I think you can. I think you can definitely do it that way. It just takes some time and attention and consistency sake wrapping like you know what you're gonna get every right. time you wrap you don't gotta worry about all those different factors that's a good point but, uh what about you you had a, a bit of an experience yourself i need to hear the full story uh i'm not sure i'm i'm allowed to tell the full story oh come on <clears throat> because it bruh 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 um we were so my mom had surgery Mm-hmm. So we were going to take dinner over to, to them on Sunday and had some picanha, only had one, one picanha, decided that wasn't enough. So I went and bought more picanha. Nice. <laughs> How'd you cook that? I saw you, you didn't, you I didn't sliced it and it cook it time. like regular yeah. steak. It, yeah. Right? So I cooked it the same way I would have cooked it had I skewered it. Okay. I just left them as steaks and cooked them on their side out on... Out of my gas grill. No. Because I was feeling particularly lazy. My Traeger is dirty and needs to be cleaned. Mm. Um, and that's when you do hot and fast. And the only time I've ever had a fire in my Traeger was when it was dirty and I tried to go hot and fast. And Yeah. I wasn't willing to roll the dice on that one again. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, it kind of turned into a disaster of a cook because... Right as, so we were going to do picanha, we had carrots, and then we had bought like the little baby potatoes, Mm -hmm. Um, and we were going to smash them and put some cheese on top of them and Mm. put them back in the oven. Okay. Um, And the meat was just about done, 
and we were pulling the potatoes out of the uh, out of the oven. They had already been smashed once, and we were going to put cheese on them and then put them back in to, to melt. Mm-hmm. And the corner of the pan caught the top of the oven oh, as true. we were pulling them out and dumped the pan of potatoes on the floor. Mm. Words were said. Yeah. Um, as they should have been. Be weird if they didn't. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. Um, John, if you don't and, like potatoes, and, you dude, can I, just say. I love potatoes. <laughs> like, these are my favorite potatoes. Those little potatoes are... Like, I know everybody loves a big old baked potato. Mm-hmm. I love the little ones. I, I like love those. red potatoes. Yeah, I'm a big fan. Um, so when they... When they spilt, words were said, and I was not the one saying the words. Oh, <clears throat> Haley. Hey. You dog. <laughs> you draw conclusions you want to draw. <laughs> but it was enough that Beans, my 18-month-old lab, did not come running over to eat any potatoes. Because he was afraid? He was scared for his life. And I'll That's be honest, awesome. I took a picture um, <laughs> because it only seemed appropriate to put on the gram after sure. I dumped potatoes. Right. Um, and I thought I was going to die when I took the picture. She was not, not amused, huh? The, the party involved, mm-hmm. no names, please. Sure. Um, was, uh, was not appreciative of me taking a picture. That's fair. But later saw it in the real and appreciated it. I was going to say, I think America appreciated it. Yeah. So thanks for putting your life on the line for that. So one. if you don't know what we're talking about, you now have to go watch two episodes. Mm-hmm. <coughs> Um, our Traeger Day episode, which, look, it's, we learned a lot that day. We learned a lot that day about a lot of things. Yeah. yeah. Mostly about recording and <laughs> moving and like, it was painful guys. It's pretty rough. It's pretty rough. rough. But somewhere in there, I dump a pan of potatoes all over the patio. Mm-hmm. Um, and then last week on Instagram, or I guess it was this week. Yeah, it was this was week. Was that just yesterday? Yeah. Holy crap, it's going to be a long week. I know, right? It's only freaking Tuesday. <clears throat> um, I need summer to come again. <laughs> <laughs> We've got a long weekend. Yeah. Um, yeah. There was another potato incident. So Check it out. It's pretty funny. Actually, the way you played it was, was yeah. hilarious. And in the process, like, half the picanha got overcooked and... Was ugh, medium well oh, to bummer. well and because you were dealing with the potatoes and yep that sucks yeah there were a couple of pieces um my parents got a couple of good pieces and then I set the table and my boys all took their steaks before I even like sat down and so they got really nice cuts I was gonna say well like, played boys well like played medium medium rare. Mm-hmm. And I had this like medium well piece of garbage. And yeah. I was like, <laughs> I'm like looking at my four year old longing after his like, and he loved it, man. Yeah. Yeah. My kids are not going to be the, can I have my steak well done, please? Yeah. That's good. That is good. Oh, so we both had cooks go awry. Yeah. But. At the end of the day, like it was still a decent meal. And yeah, it was good. So, good food. I also made those steak pops. Yeah, you did. Did I tell you about those? We talked about those on the last episode. I mean, there was very little. Yeah, I don't remember why I was at your house, but I saw them while you were cooking them. You brought me a sticker. All right. Thanks for that, by the way. <coughs> um. Yeah. So I. Uh, we just we were at the store, and so I grabbed some steak, and I'm I want to try it with chicken and. Uh, there was something else that we talked about last episode pork. that I want to try. Yeah, pork. And I saw today somebody take pork and kind of do the same thing I did with steak, and I think that would be way better because steak's a little bit tougher. Um, and pork, I feel like, especially this was pork belly, and it looked like, I mean, he rolled it up like a lollipop and just sprinkled some brown sugar, put it on a stick, and it looked really good. So I know. Anyway, they were okay. I wrapped it in bacon, learned a lot. I tried to use the Vortex on my Weber, mm-hmm. and it just got so hot in the middle. My thought was kind of do a reverse sear on everything, 
but that thing gets so hot that the bacon like would start on fire the second I put it over top yeah, of it, and it was like, was, oh man. I've had my vortex so, hot. I don't think I've ever had it as hot as you had that one going. Yeah, it was, it was screaming. So yeah. it was still really good, but I would probably, <clears throat> I'm excited to try something different because it didn't go as well. I tried to make a reel too, but and uh, you know, my cameraman's. 10 so it didn't it wasn't as good as as he had hoped he was kind of bummed he was like oh i missed this i missed that but hey man they gotta learn sometime yep absolutely so. as do i i don't think any of mine are much better so yeah Haley was helping me with the uh, picanha and she's like she's like i don't know what i'm doing i was like and you think charlie or rob does yeah like, just go for it like <laughs> it can't be worse than what we've been posting so <clears throat> yeah but I say again, man, some of these accounts that we shout out and look at, like, oh, got such we got to figure it out, man, because they, it looks really good. I know. But I'm just telling myself they pay somebody to come in and photograph everything. So. Or they're at least, like, professionally trained instead of... Instead of... The hillbillies. iPhone trained. Yeah. That's true. Good call. Well, what are we talking about, John? Well... This will come out a few days before our long weekend. Yep. <clears throat> that long weekend is Labor Day. And it is a much needed respite. Yep. So I um, thought first we would start with a little bit of history. I'm excited. Be a little educational here. Heck yeah, man. I mean, I, I also feel like we're old Ben now, so we have to teach something otherwise. Yeah, there's got to be history involved. I'm excited. Also, we didn't plan this, but does everyone like our... Yeah, look at that setup. Let us know if you'd like some merch. Ooh. We have talked about this, but given nobody comments on our Instagram... <laughs> yeah, nobody answers our questions except for my wife. <laughs> Bruh. Bruh. <laughs> so, we, Whatever. we could use some encouragement if people want merch. Yeah. We will go... Full in on the <laughs> We work. will hand deliver it to you. Oh, be careful. We've got people that listen in Germany. Well, yeah, but Germans don't drink things, do they? They just don't. They just use like lagers, flagons, or, or whatever they're called. Steins? Yes. The, I, I, don't know what I, a flagon I, I feel is. like this is it. Like... Yeah, you're right. Listen, somebody in Germany wants a Stein. With fat guys with smokers sticker on it. That would be an epic. That would be sweet. There would be some epic content there. Yeah. Let us know, Germany. Anyway, sorry. Go on. No, no, no. Um, <clears throat> anyways, Labor Day. Uh, do you know when the first Labor Day was? Uh, it seems like it's not as long ago as I originally thought. I'm going to say the 60s. Uh, you would be wrong. Dang it. It was much longer ago. Oh, really? 82. Oh, I wasn't even close. 1882. Like Industrial Revolution. Industrial time. Revolution. Okay, I guess that makes sense. Um, <clears throat> it was organized by the Central Labor Union. Okay. The event included a parade and a festival in honor of workers and their contributions. Really? Well, yep. I feel silly. I was almost 100 years off. And in 1894, it became a federal holiday observed on the first Monday of every September. Are you serious? For some reason, I was thinking it wasn't that long ago. Very cool. It was a minute ago. That's fair. Um, in the words of my boy Alan Jackson, God bless the working man. It's a great song. That it is. Um, just kind of scrolling through here. Um, the interesting thing that I thought about this as I went through and was kind of reading a bunch of different stuff and, um, talking to chat GPT about this. Obviously. Yep. Um, barbecues have been a central part of Labor Day since the very beginning. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. I didn't know that. Yep. They, like community barbecues or like family or what? It was like it was a, a family gathering, like community picnics, barbecue, um, and also a 
Something that we haven't talked about a ton that we could do a whole episode on this um, is the potluck aspect mm. of a barbecue. Yeah. Because it's pretty common to, if you go to a barbecue, you take something to share. Right. The host may do the meat, uh-huh. but all of the sides and stuff come from, from a potluck. Yeah. I like that. So, um, fun fact, potlucks date back to the 1600s. Really? Yeah. I was, they became popular in the in the United States because of Labor Day and the barbecues associated with it. Huh. Um, but there's history of them all the way back to the 1600s. Really? Here in America or like... Like, what does potluck mean? Um, so it's, it, the potluck came from, it was the luck of whatever you made in the oh, pot. Okay. Like it I guess was, that makes sense. That's where it, <clears throat> that's where it came from in Europe. But yeah, I asked that question. Let's see. Um, let's see. One of the earliest recorded instances of a potluck style meal is associated with native american practice of giveaway feasts really these feasts were held to celebrate important events and honor guests and participants would bring food and other items to share with the community huh native americans huh mm-hmm. that's awesome let's see i'm trying to find where it was talking about the 1600s But yeah, so a little uh, a little dash of history there. There you go. That <clears throat> I'm not a big union man. Nor am I. Um, Much but, to the chagrin of some of my fellow teachers. Yeah, teachers' unions are a big deal. It is a big deal. Um, yeah, but we did get something good out of the unions. Absolutely. And, you know, one thing I was just thinking is Labor Day. I mean, you get excited about barbecuing, as you and I do, on Memorial Day. And then you almost feel guilty because you see all these things like it's more than just barbecues. Like, there's a real meat. And it's like, yes, absolutely. Fourth of July, same thing. It's like, no, people died. Like, this is a serious Labor Day. Labor Day. It's a guilt-free excuse to, <laughs> to barbecue, man. It's a guilt-free like, excuse to do nothing all weekend. Absolutely. Like, I have earned this day off. Yes, I am a laborer, and I will relax and eat deliciousness. I say, as a corporate suit who sits in an office on Zoom calls all day. I mean, listen. It's not all roses. Labor people. has changed. Okay, we don't we don't all have to be coal miners to put in our dues now. No, um, it's not all roses in the office. I'll tell you. Yeah. Sometimes I can't refill my Mountain Dew Zero for like three hours. That's bull crap, dude. <laughs> it ran out today, and I didn't have time to change it between meetings, and I almost cried. <laughs> That's unacceptable. <clears throat> I know. Um, what are you cooking for Labor Day, John? Um. I'm scared to tell you, because you were mad that I didn't tell you about it sooner. I'm pretty pissed. I'm not going to lie. We'll have words after this is over. I, and the worst part is, is like, I even called my dad while I was there. Oh, my he gosh. Just, like, on set, it was on Saturday. It was a traumatic day. <laughs> <coughs> yeah. I got hit on the freeway. Oh, that's right. Oh, you should tell us about that. What happened? It was just... Stupid stop and go traffic, and somebody was looked like they were on their phone. Hmm. But guy in front of me stopped quick. Um, I could have just slammed on my brakes, but I saw a really big truck behind me. I mean, I drive an F one hundred and fifty. This was a lifted three quarter ton, and I so instead of just slamming on my brakes. I went onto the shoulder, stopped basically next to the car that was in front of me to mm-hmm. give an extra car length, and the guy behind me just followed me and crunched mm-hmm. my bumper. Bummer. Um, I mean, you've seen it. It's like it's not yeah. terrible. It isn't. I su- drive it. It was surprising how much the estimate came back at. Oh, I'll bet. You want to guess? Uh, 
Okay, so there was a hole in the bumper. Was the tailgate damaged at all? Uh huh. Five grand. Yeah, forty six hundred. Are you serious? I thought I was way over. That's ridiculous. Mm -hmm. Jeez. No, and they're not replacing the tailgate. Like they're just gonna try and pop it out. Really? Yeah. Jeez. But I'm sorry. Yeah. That's what insurance is for. And like, it was a sucky thing that happened. But like, the other guy was super cool. Like, yeah, it sounded like like he he wasn't a jerk. He was like he owned it. Like, um. So it was really good interaction. Yeah, that's good. But we did that. We had to go to the highway patrol, like precinct barracks, whatever it is. And mm. they were hauling a guy in in handcuffs and had his Hellcat. They were impounding busy. Had run from the Brigham City Police. And, Jeez. Um, I fifteen is a scary place, man. Dude, it's so bad right now. Yeah, it's all the construction, so especially through that Ogden area, like yeah. So it's a bummer. Anyways. It was a it was a stressful day, so I don't want to hear any crap about the fact that I forgot to call you. All right, all right. Um, but yeah, brisket prime briskets were on sale at Costco. Ten dollars off their their package price. That's awesome. Yeah. So I've got a brisket sitting in my fridge that I think I have to do it. Yeah, absolutely. So It'd be I could, weird if you didn't. I mean, I could just freeze it and like hold it. Mm-hmm. But I think I'm going to do a brisket. Nice. I don't know what I'm going to do with the brisket. Yeah. What do you... I mean, all I've ever done... I love holy cow on a brisket. Mm -hmm. And that's basically what I use. Have you ever used anything different? Or or are you thinking of juicing it up some other way? Um, I've done... I've done garlic junkie. I've done... Dia de la fajita. Hmm. I've done... Just like a Dalmatian, like a salt and pepper, garlic. Mm-hmm. Um, a holy cow is my favorite, though. Like, yeah. I always go back to a holy cow. Dude, I I love all Malcolm Reed stuff, and I've, I've used his TX rub, and it's really good. It's just that salt and pepper, garlic, just coarse grain. That holy cow, though, something about it, I just really, it complements the brisket really well. Yeah. It's Any a, beef, I really like it on. Yep. So I'll probably do that. We'll probably do brisket sandwiches on Labor Day. Mm-hmm. And then we'll eat brisket for a week. Nice. Which, there are worse things. Yeah. Yeah. That's not a hard life. Yeah. I mean, Haley just sent me a clip. Um, it was like an ad on Facebook or something. I didn't know this, but uh, Meat Church has a partnership with Del Taco. Oh, really? Yeah. For brisket, all sorts of stuff. That's awesome. So, we'll do brisket tacos and nachos and hmm. loaded fries are a big thing, apparently. Mm. I think I could get on board with that. Yeah, heck yeah. So. Ooh, that sounds really good, actually. Mm-hmm. That hmm. and brisket hash on Sunday morning. See, that's all I usually, that's my go-to. Oh, brisket, gonna, pulled pork, anything. It's going to be fast Sunday. <sighs> Boo. I mean, uh, uh, <laughs> blessings and stuff. Yeah. yeah, I hope nobody's listening. <laughs> well, judging by the responses I got on my question, nobody is. Except for Whitney. And she'll judge us. Bruh. Bruh. Oh. That's awesome. What about you? What are you cooking? I've got some boneless, skinless thighs sitting in my fridge. And I'd kind of like to try... That um, hot chicken sandwich, dude, that it's you made, oh so good, yeah. See, it sounds delicious, looks delicious. I think I might try that. We'll see. I don't know that my kids would really like it if it's too spicy. I know my wife won't try it, but I'm I'm curious to see how it goes. So I will try it. All right, it's so good, dude. Is it so good? I'm kind of I'm I'm excited to just try something different. You know, I mean. I really like chicken thighs, um, especially the bone, like teriyaki, all that stuff. I love it. So Yeah. I think I only, and like his recipe is like, you can marinate it for an hour up to 24 hours. Right. Um, you can ask Haley when you leave tonight. I mean, I did mine for like four or five. Uh huh. I didn't feel like it was, like it definitely wasn't any spicier than a Chick-fil-A sandwich. Really? 
Do you think it, so it probably gets spicier the longer you leave it in? Yeah. Makes sense. Like, I kind of want to do one for 12 to 18. and Yeah. I also didn't do as much hot sauce in the in the basting hmm. as he did. Okay. Yeah, I'll have to do it again, but I or look at it again, do a little more research. But I think for right now, that's kind of my plan. We'll see what happens. So I always go in like, oh, Labor Day weekend is going to be so relaxing, it and then we end is, up just man. run, run, it's... run from thing to thing, and so anyway. Yeah, it's it's never relaxing. Yeah. Somebody once told me that if you ask... Oh, it was actually a comedian that I know. It's like, if you ever ask somebody with kids when their favorite time of life is, they will say before they had kids or after their kids leave the house. There's like 20 years in there that they don't mention. And that's when kids are... <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's just busy. Like, kids are just involved with so much. And I mean, I love my kids. I wouldn't trade them for anything. But sometimes... Like, I look at my brother, just him and his wife. They're not in school, and I'm just like, man, I think maybe we messed up. Like, Dude, that looks awesome. We waited a while before we had kids. Um, I mean, we'd been married four or five years. Mm. And Dude, those first four or five years were awesome. Yeah. <clears throat> like, we had a dog a couple years in, but mm-hmm. otherwise, like... And we just picked up and we went and we did whatever we wanted, whenever we wanted. Oh, and man. Seriously. It was fantastic. It was a good time. Especially when we were both out of school and we were both working. like, And it felt like we had real money. Yeah. See, we we had kids, or we had Damon before we finished school, so we were always just school work, school work, school work, kid. And then it was... Yeah. Art. But... Yeah, so our four-year-old started preschool this year. Mm. So he goes for two and a half hours now. And Haley like went and got her hair cut and like stopped by my office today mm. and was like... So. Had time to do things? <clears throat> yeah, we were like joking. She's like, I kind of love it. <laughs> <laughs> she was all worried she was going to be sad and miss him and like not know what to do. And she's like... It's time. been 10 years <laughs> since I've had any time to myself. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, so super mm. excited for her to, to have that chance. Yeah, that's good. But fully support the uh, that Mexican chicken sandwich. Yeah, I am going to give a shot. We'll see. My plans always change. I always have these grand ideas and we run out of time and I end up just grilling it up. But either way, it'll be delicious. That's the easy one, though. Like... As long as you can get it in the marinade for a little bit of time. Mm-hmm. And, like, it's not like it's a hard marinade. It's yeah. put your chicken in a bag with the stuff from a can. Right. That's true. So. Yeah. I think I might give it a try. We'll see. Yep. Um, um. You want to introduce a new segment to the, to the show now that school's back in session? Um, what do you mean? I think I know what you mean, but I don't want to botch it. No, it's exactly that. <laughs> we were just talking about this in the car um, as we went to fill up our drinks before we recorded tonight. Uh huh. Is it inappropriate to take bets on things that will happen in your classroom this year? See, I'm not against it. I, uh, I uh, announced for a football game once, and some of the teachers that I work with gave me a list of words. And they said, if you can work these words into uh, your announcing, we'll give you like a drink or something. We should do something like that. Like work these words into regular conversation or see when a student is going to do this or something. Yeah. Just use my students as pawns. I love it. <laughs> love it. Yeah. I, I have I th- no ideas, but it sounds awesome. I mean, all the ones that I have thought of are just kind of cruel to the kids. Like, oh. Or we can go over under 45 days before a student cries in your classroom. (laughs) Uh, Probably under. I'm not going to lie. Some of them, I'm already getting there. I'm ready to make them cry. Mike's going under. Under on the cry. Yeah. Need to get like a whiteboard of... We should. We should make a bunch of stuff. That's a good idea. All right. We've got homework. Okay. This week's question... 
if anyone's listening and would like us to bet on something that's going to happen in Mike's class, yeah, let us know. He teaches high school mathematics. I do. I do indeed. To freshmen, sophomores? I've, yeah, I, I've got and a two class. classes of freshmen and then juniors and seniors. Okay. So I kind of got everybody except for the sophomores. But. Which, let's be honest, they're not the group you want to spend time with anyway. They get forget forgotten a lot. They're used to it, so it's fine. Okay. So, anywho. What about cell phone rings? Does that happen a lot in class? Oh, yeah. Cell phones are the... I just saw an article that one school district has banned cell phones. Like, the kids come in, put them in that zipper pouch, and just hand them in. And it looks so awesome. But there is no way we could get away with it here. Oh my gosh, I can't even imagine. Can you imagine all the Karens at the school breaking the door down so they can get a hold of their kid in the middle of math class? Like how many how many times did the phone ring today? Uh, I had at least three, but there's a bunch of buzzes, so so you I don't had know if we th- count that three audibles. Yeah, three audibles. It's a holiday weekend coming up. I'm gonna go. You're gonna have at least seventeen total this week. All right, I'll take the under. You can go under on 17. Yeah, because I'm going to start cracking down just so I can win this bet. You can't change your behavior. I'm changing everything. No, I'm just kidding. Okay. So next time, 17. Okay. I'll keep a tally. All right. Until next time. (laughs) (laughs) I'm John. I'm Mike. This is Fat Guys with Smokers. (laughs) Thanks for listening to the Fat Guys with Smokers podcast. Be sure to check us out on Instagram and Facebook. Leave us a comment. We'd love to hear from you. Be sure to subscribe so you don't forget to tune in for even more nonsense from a couple of bad guys with smokers. Don't forget to like, subscribe.